this whole approach basically takes us to, gives us the best possibility of making that happen. You know, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, right. they don't have it. So let's do the, 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 this uh, battle thing to create the Board of Supervisors. We know that we have more power in the budget exactly. supervisors. We're trying to have a transition government that could then determine whether or not we actually need county government, because otherwise people are going to say, oh, do we really need, um, you know, you're getting rid, you had a horrible government 30 years ago. Do yeah, but we may have thrown the baby out with the bathwater too, because to to be with the, to comply with the Voting Rights Act, we may have been able to do it right. in another way, but we decided to change. And by the way, yeah. you know, we have two legislative yeah. districts representing, three, yeah. representing Yonkers that were formed because right. of the Voting Rights Act. So putting the council, uh, which was also formed because they had to meet that voting rights act, would be the right thing to do. Yeah, but I, I, when I got, listen, what we have, as I said this morning, hi, Bobby, Ann, hi. Is, is a sort of Damocles. Let's see what they do. Everybody now, the board of legislators yeah. saying, we're going to change it, make it right. But as Phil Reisman said, they became what? The uh, we now get it party. No, we get it party. Yeah, you know, so we have now a two prong thing. Yeah. We're calling for the yeah. Charter Revision Commission, so and we're going to see how government is structured. But at the same time, we may have to get rid of the legislature or, if they don't do the job. Count it, but yeah, but let, let, let me just dude, say, I think we should stick to the. My uh, my feeling is that what resonates is you know this. Do we need county government? Yes or no? actually amortized a long time ago. Okay, could you put it right behind here for the cameras? Just hold, grab it from the bottom and just put it behind this crowd right here until somebody comes. Just walk in. Now, can you hold it up like this? Yeah, right, right. Hold it from here. Okay. Okay. No, up, up. Hold the pole like this. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Okay. There it is. Now just hey, take it. Yeah. Okay. How you doing, Bob? Someone's got to take charge here. I got it. All right. Uh, if you can, when we talk, just make sure that's high enough so they can get it. All right. You got a visual, right? What? Too high? Well, then let it come down a little bit. Listen to these guys. But straighten it out. Make sure it's straight. It would be very important. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a citizen's initiative. And uh, let me say how proud I am to stand next to an elected official from Westchester County, Paul Feiner, a Democrat, my mother's favorite elected official. She couldn't wait to vote for you, Paul. So you're a great public servant. Thank you. You know, there's, I remember my days in Congress to do something important. You had to work with people on the other side of the aisle. I did it with Barney Frank, Tom Lantos, Jerry Nadley, even now at the tunnel from Brooklyn to Port Elizabeth. And it's a shame we don't see more of that. And it's a shame, you know, I saw yesterday uh, Mr. Ryan announcing his initiative, and it's always good to see initiatives, uh, but he may be reacting to an election, maybe his own. We're not reacting. We have been working on this for months. In fact, we were about to announce this right after the primary, figuring that's a good time, you know, September 16th, I think it was, and we were prevailed upon by the party leaders. We went to visit every party leader and said, you know, you might be kind of confusing the message of the campaign. Why don't you wait until after the campaign? So we did. I think the point is that this is not a reaction. This is a well-planned initiative by a group of uh, citizens. In fact, uh, we have a good part of the executive committee here with us, Dr. Bob Flower, Bobby Ann Cox, an attorney. We have Steve Mayo, an attorney. Kevin Riley, an attorney, couldn't be with us. And I mentioned the three attorneys because I wanted you to know that the basis of the petition drive has been vetted, not only by three volunteer attorneys who came up with a law that I didn't know about, the alternative, alternative form of county government law from 1952, but Jeff Binder, you here. We had to hire a prominent election attorney. He's been very kind to us with the fees, though, because he knows this is not a commercial venture. And uh, he then vetted everything so that what you're about to hear 
has been thoroughly uh, researched. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, Paul and I have been working on this since the spring. In fact, I uh, remember that the first major thing we did, Paul, was a mailing to 5,000, uh, I guess they were the district leaders of all the five parties. And we got a very good reaction at that time. This obviously is a nonpartisan thing. And we decided that it was important to keep this thing going, to figure out what we could do to answer the public's discontent with their tax bills in Westchester County. Don't forget, out of 3,000 counties, this is the county now with the highest tax burden in America per person, mainly, mainly the property taxes. So we went forward and we came up with, we agreed to come up with a two-part thing on parallel tracks. And Paul's always been talking about a Charter Revision Commission, so when you hear it from Mr. Kaplowitz and Mr. Ryan, believe me, months ago, Paul has been telling me that's the first thing we should be doing, going before this county board of legislators, asking for a Charter Revision Commission to, re to press the reset button in Westchester County. It's, it's probably not structured the way it should be in order to streamline things. The other thing that we came up with, the good attorneys I mentioned came up with, then we vetted it, is a petition drive under state law. Believe it or not, there's a state law that no one's utilized except maybe one county, but they prevailed upon their legislator to do it. Legislature, we're not doing that. We're going to the citizens under this law to get the 26,000 signatures we need, and we're going to have those signatures ready to submit under the prescriptions of the law in order to get rid of the county board of legislators. Now, you might say, well, do you want to do that? Well, right now, people want to get rid of all county government. So we figure that's a good place to start. Let's get rid of the county board if they're not doing their job. Now, are they doing their job? People are very discontent about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have seen Mr. Ryan yesterday and Mr. Kaplowitz. So we're going to give them a chance. In fact, Paul and I are going to go before the board and ask for another Charter Revision Commission with our prescription. We don't know whether they're asking for the right things. For instance, what is Mr. Ryan coming up with something called the... Uh, uh, he wants now an office of the controller. That's the language from the 50s. Today you need a chief financial officer. I'm the one who introduced the Chief Financial Officer Act for the United States government. It's the 20th anniversary next year. Besides that, we need an independent audit committee of this county. That's what he should have been talking about. And why didn't he reach out to a congressman from Westchester County? I know I'm in a different party, but, you know, Westchester sent me there in 1984 as the only practicing CPA in America. The only one out of all, you know, in 200 years. He could have said, Joe, let's sit down and talk about this. No, he just jumps the gun and talks about language from the 50s. In any case, I'm happy to be here. Paul, it's your turn. Okay, great. Well, first of all, um, I will, first of all, thank you for um, uh, your efforts, and I'd also like to recognize Richard Garfunkel, who's also uh, been involved. Um, Excuse me, on our executive your, committee, too, yes. I've, I have always believed that um, we cannot, as a county, continue to operate as, as we have been in, you know, in the future. Um, the economy is horrible. Uh, taxes are high. Westchester has the highest distinction as the distinction of paying the highest taxes in, in the United States. When I was a member of the County Board of Legislators um, in the early 1990s, I suggested that we eliminate county government. I continue to believe that we should eliminate county government. They don't have it in Connecticut, they don't have it in Rhode Island, and Massachusetts in the mid-1990s authorized the uh, abolition of, of county government. They're doing just fine. Their taxes are less than ours. Um, so the message that I feel is that we should continue the, um, the effort. I'm pleased that uh, members of the county legislature are talking about downsizing county government. I'm pleased that members of the legislature are talking about um, um, restructuring governments and shrinking uh, the size of government. But what we have to do now is move away from the rhetoric and actually come up with the specifics, which is much harder. Um, I think that there's a lot of functions that the county provides that could easily be shifted to other layers of government. You don't need a social service department at the state and county level. You know, the health department, the recreation department, the public works department, the public uh, safety departments, these uh, functions could be uh, transferred to other layers of government 
just like they did in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. So we could get, so the issue is um, how could we provide the services and doing it in the leanest, most efficient manner um, you know, possible. Uh, the reason why I support um, transferring um, the legislature to a board of supervisors is not because I, as a town supervisor, want to have um, more power or um, more oversight of county government. I believe that a board of supervisors would be a transition body that would move the county in the direction of Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. I believe it's a temporary measure that will eventually result in the elimination of county government and the transferring of county um, government responsibilities to either the state or, or local governments. Um, if it was up to me, I would like to see um, a smaller county legislature. You know, I don't think you need 17 legislators. You don't need over 40 staff members working for the Board of Legislators. When I was a legislator, uh, you know, the only, uh, you know, I couldn't even get a Xerox machine. Um, now every legislator has, um, has their own staffers. It's a big ripoff. It's a big waste of money. But there's a lot of waste in county government, and we just don't need it, in my opinion. Thank you, Paul. Well, why don't we uh, entertain some questions, because we can go on talking about this. We're going to start this drive very shortly. Uh, the forms are being developed. Obviously, these forms, since no one's used this particular law before, it's called, again, the alternative form of county government law. It prescribes four alternatives. We pick what they call the president alternative, which is an elected county official and an unelected board of supervisors. We could have picked another, but we felt that was the appropriate one. And by the way, you can always use this law again in the future. You could say right now, all right, let's get rid of the county board, but in five years, four years, we can get rid of the county executive and make it a county manager if we want it. The people are speaking, and that's the important thing right now. There's discontent out there. Let the people show their will by putting their signatures on that petition, and then we, we're going to have at least nine months to submit those petitions to the uh, clerk of the Board of Legislatures and the clerk of the, uh, I guess, the County Board of Elections. And uh, we're now making sure the forms are all vetted. We got Jeff Binder here, our attorney. You can ask any questions you want on that. And also let the voters decide. Let the people decide what type of government they, they want. Right now, the only mechanism voters have dealing with county government is uh, this type of uh, petition drive. If there was another initiative where the voters would have the ability of um, voting whether or not to continue county government or consolidate county government, then we could have explored that option, but we don't have that option right now right. under New York State law. And these are ideas whose time has come. I mean, why? You remember Sal Preciosa, Westchester 2000? I mean, I worked with him when I was a congressman, and then after that, what happened? Well, I guess that there wasn't enough stomach to do that. Now there is, and we need to restructure county government, for sure. Uh, just so I'm clear, um, you're not really in favor of a board of supervisors per se. You're just seeing it as a transition that's, to elimination that's of county my, government. My, my, you know, we're not saying that yet. I don't my, think. My, every you know, every member of our group has different views. I continue to believe that we don't need county government. You know, I felt that in the 1990s. I felt that last year. I feel the same way this way. You know, I, I also think that we can't look at this movement and base it on who's in office at the current time. Because 10 years from now, 20 years from now, there's gonna be different elected officials. I didn't feel that we needed a legislature when I was a legislator. I don't feel we need, didn't feel we needed a uh, county government uh, last year uh, when we had a Democratic county executive. And I don't feel we need county government right now with a Republican um, you know, county executive and a Democratic board of legislators. The, the names and the parties will keep shifting. I see a board of supervisors as being the body that is most um, able to move us in the direction of eliminating county government because the supervisors don't have a stake in the continuation of county government. Legislators have a stake in keeping their jobs, so they're going to want to always have bigger government and a more relevant county government. Supervisors are more interested in the local governments rather than uh, the having a right. large county government. Well, That's my, my opinion. Well, I'd like to... Just to ask one question on this. Sure. You know, the, the Board of Supervisors was, an, was always thought of as an efficient form of 
you know, government, but it was uh, it was found to be unconstitutional. Okay, in I was going to say that. There's a little history here. We we know that the Board of Legislators was created because of the Voting Rights Act. Okay, but we may have acted too fast. We may have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. You know that three of the Board of Legislators, three of the legislators represent Yonkers. That's where the problem was. You know that the council in Yonkers has been formed to meet the Voting Rights Act. So we have now a new age. We're saying that instead of the mayor of Yonkers, we're willing to see the five council members on this Board of Legislators so we can answer the, the Voting Rights Act. And they may have not thought this thing through carefully enough in the past and responding to the law. We think you can respond to the law without having a Board of Legislators. And also, let me just say one other thing. The board of Without a board of uh, yeah legislators, okay. most people think that the former board of supervisors did not work, and most people in the county feel that the board of legislators doesn't work. You know, you don't need nobody could say that the board of legislators is efficient with more than forty uh, staffers when twenty years ago there were half that many. Uh, I believe very strongly that um, there's a better way of running. Um, government more lean, leaner, more efficient with that. And I think we have to avoid and eliminate a layer of, uh, of, of government. I don't think it's sustainable right. and I don't think it's affordable to have too many layers of government in New York State. And that's the key issue. The key issue is, and that's why I have to say, I'm not sure we should eliminate county government. But I have to see now what these formulas are for restructuring. And I need to rely on people like Paul and the other mayors and supervisors and council people who run local government. Can they handle additional things? Are they willing to downsize? Are there things that they uh, think a county is needed for? I'm not sure we have the answers to these questions. But at the same time, we need to show the people who are very upset right now that we're moving forward. First, to try to see what the restructuring formulas are. Second, to get the signatures, because if the county board is not going to do the job, we're going to get rid of it. Yeah, Steve Mayo on our committee. I think it's a very good point that Paul made, but I get a different conclusion. I think because the Board of Supervisors may not have a stake in the county government and draw their income from it, that may, may make it the best type of government body we can ask for. So my conclusion is this Board of Supervisors might be the solution and might be the answer going forward. So I don't have to be in favor of eliminating county government forever, even though that might be an outcome. If the people want to keep a county government, but staffed with a Board of Supervisors with no personal stake in the government getting bigger, approaching $1.9 right. $1. billion like it is today, I think that's a good result. So though I started out against county government, I think this process has taught me there may be some good reasons to have county government. Well, I think we're open to anything. The answer is now we don't know Steve Mayo, M-A-Y-O. We don't know what works. That's the problem. That's why you had this last election and the result that you had. So we now have to really go to school and understand from the people who are managing things now, what is it that has to be done to reduce taxes in Westchester County. We can't afford to lose any more businesses here or right. people. Oh, well, can yeah. I just say one more yeah. thing? I mean, the, the last thing I want to say is that the one th over a year ago when we formed Rethinking Westchester, very few people, uh, when we formed Rethinking Westchester, very few people were talking about downsizing county government. Now, the, while we may not be un unanimous in our views and our vision, I think there's pretty close to unanimity that government should that the county government should shrink and be restructured your Democrats in the legislature the Republican County executive elect uh, Democrats and Republicans everybody's agreeing on the same agreeing to that so I think we're moving in the right direction but this is a democracy and we have Democrats and Republicans and people have differences of opinions but I think will reach a consensus as a county as a result of our efforts. Let me, let me make a statement on this too. My Richard Garfunkel, WVOX. Right. I have been uh, a, a lifelong card-carrying Democrat for God knows as long as it's possible. It's a bipartisan group. One of the problems facing us is that if you eliminated literally the whole county board of legislators, all the mm -hmm. people that work for it, you're talking about less than 1% of the cost of county government. We understand this. We also understand that if you could shift most of the responsibilities and cut half the cost, you're still talking about a, a drop in the bucket comparison to the cost of living in Westchester. What I think we see is regarding the Charter Revision Commission, a Budget Advisory Commission, Citizens Commission on this, is to create models for the other 48 communities. That's the problem we're locked into. Uh, the question came up yesterday or the other day, how can Harrison have a 20% increase? 
It's not because that the supervisor was going on trips to uh, China. The bottom line is it's salaries, it's arbitration boards, it's state mandates. It's pensions. It's many, many things that have to be, if the county can show, if we can show on a model to bring some efficiency, whether it's Paul's perspective, whether it's Joe's, whether it's Steve Mayo's, whether it's an, a, a, a collective look at it. If we can show that we have to re revisit how we're running ourselves, these 43 communities are going to have to look at it because the bottom line is nobody today is being forced out of Westchester because of county government costs, but they're certainly being forced out of Westchester because of municipal and education costs okay. that are out of sight and out of control. Thank you. Okay, and let me give a very simple common sense suggestion to Mr. Ryan since he opened the door for a, a new kind of a, a accounting office. You know, I don't, of 17, can you tell me if anybody on that board is an accountant or a CPA? I don't think there is. Okay, and, and, and it's, it's amazing to me, here we have this county, a very large entity, and we know we have laws on the books right now on publicly traded companies called Sarbanes-Oxley that you need an independent audit committee made up of people who have financial backgrounds. And the, and the chairman of that audit committee, that's what I do for a living, usually is a certified public accountant. Now, why didn't Mr. Ryan come up with a nice idea like that in this age. Not something from the 50s, uh, you know, an office of the controller, but why not an independent audit committee to hire the accountants, the CPAs, to sit down and talk about the scope of auditing, to sit down and talk about the form of the reporting to the people. I mean, you look at these statements and what you got is a budget statement. I want to see a statement that tells me what's the financial condition of this county and its operating results. Are any of your uh, members going to try to get on this uh, Charter Revision Commission? Some, some would like to. Some have told me they, they, they'd like to be candidates. Uh, I don't know how you make that happen. Maybe we need to uh, oh, get you to make you the case publicly. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, the Charter Revision... Yeah, come back I think here. if the Charter Revision uh, Commission is going to work, we need people from all different persuasions, and I think it's important to have um, representation from... Um, from our group, from people who believe yes. we don't need county government, from people who believe we need smaller county government, because we really have to work as a partnership. This is going to be successful if it's non-political, um, if it's Democrat versus Republicans, if it becomes a political, uh, you know, just rhetoric, nothing's going to happen. You know, I would like to see, you know, all well, the Democrats on the board uh, working with the, uh, the new county executive all the supervisors and mayors, everybody should work together because we have the same problem. We have the highest taxes in, um, in America and we want to end that distinction. And I would gladly volunteer as a citizen to be on that commission to talk about the issues that relate to financial responsibility and public accountability. Any other questions? Yes. So you, you're coming up with the petitions, any idea of how long it's going to take until you get them out to uh, circulation? Okay, uh, I would say within a couple of weeks we should have the forms done, and then we're going to have a good nine months to get this done. Let me tell you what the law says. The law says that you need 10% of the voters of the prior gubernatorial election. That number is approximately 260,000, so you need 26,000, slightly less than 26,000 votes. So obviously we've got to get 50,000. Uh, we expect to have that process done by September, and at that point we'll be in a position to submit the petition. And you're going to be uh, obviously taking throughout the county? Or... Uh, throughout the whole county, yes. We've already been in touch with the Tea Party movements. We've got activists ready to get these uh, forms to go and get them signed. How long do you think it's going to take to get this, uh, this whole process completed? You know, Ryan is talking about uh, having the Charter Revision Commission coming back uh, in March of 2011. That even should be done sooner, but obviously we should wait till the new county executive gets in there and, and, and so we can talk to uh, the people in the executive branch uh, working with the uh, legislative branch as it is right now. So I think the whole issue of reinventing government should start today. Nobody should wait on that. Uh, I don't know why we have to wait until March to have a, uh, an official uh, Charter Revision Commission. In terms of our issue, uh, the law says that these petitions have to be submitted in an off, in an odd election year. So we have to prepare this to be on the ballot for 2011, for, for the so petition drive. Next year, yes. Because I know what Ryan's position, what he was proposing, is that it would take until March 1st to get everybody lined up as far as members of this charter revision commission and get them started, give them a year to get the work done, and then have it. Okay, another uh, yeah. member of our board, Dr. Bob Flower. Bob Flower. Uh, 
comment on the Charter Revision Commission. What we're proposing is a Citizens Charter Revision Commission, not one appointed by the legislature or, or any other uh, political body. We think that becomes much more independent and oriented towards the voters. So there's a big distinction between where we want to go and where they're looking to go. How would you choose them? Uh, I think what we would do is submit names from different organizations. There are a number of organizations that are making them move towards better county government. We, could, we can create a pool and, and, and come to a consensus on, on the direction. But I, and we may parallel what they're doing anyway. Yes, yes exactly. Re exactly yes. When you're asking people to rethink government, the more ideas, the more, the more suggestions that are thrown on the table, the better. So if, you know, Mr. Ryan wants to have his commission, if the county executive wants to have another commission, if we want to have another, a third effort, I think the more people talking about reorganization and restructuring, we'll get some ideas. And we may, the conclusion may not be what we envision today, but I think you're going to have a much better, uh, leaner, more efficient government at the end of the process as a result of all this, um, this effort. We're winning just by, uh, uh, by being involved, and just the efforts we waged in the past year have already produced results, have already uh, made people rethink the need of uh, government as we know it. So I'm, I'm pleased with the progress we're making. So am I, and I think much of the action, you're right, Paul, that we're seeing today is as a result of the fact that we have been uh, right. doing this and visibly for the last eight months, at least. A suggestion on your petition, put it online. I understand it has to be signed originally, hard copy, but right. getting petitions out in the hands of citizens who will go around and get signatures, so put it online. Good. And, uh, and have them get the signatures they've got to notarize them. We'll be doing that. Thank you. So thank you. Now, anybody else? Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Thank you.